Joining me now on our news panel, Mark Calvi, reporter for the San Francisco Business Times. Stu Wu, reporter for the Wall Street Journal. And Nanette Asimov, staff writer for the San Francisco Chronicle. Nanette, you are just back from Berkeley's Wheeler Hall, where there's been a lot of action. Before that, you were down in Los Angeles, where the regions voted. But what happened here in our area today? Well, there was a day-long takeover of the English department, which is known as Wheeler Hall, on the Cal campus. And uh, students, I would say some 2,000 of them, ringing that building in protest, often in the pouring rain today, and shouting their opposition to this tremendous fee increase that was just approved by the UC Regents in Los Angeles yesterday. So uh, there was a lot of anger on campus today and um, the, the, the sense of power that the students felt that they needed to, to do to take over this building. And it culminated in the arrest of 40 students, uh, you know, as dusk fell and they were led away. What angered them, of course, was the fee hike. So explain that a little bit. Well, it started out with the fee hike. Of course, the students inside had other demands. They wanted uh, layoffs reinstated of custodians and things like that. But this is a fee hike that is uh, that takes the cost of a UC education over $10,000 for the first time. It's a 32% fee in, uh, increase that will increase 15% in January and then a total of 32% next fall. And students are absolutely livid about this. Uh, they cite the master plan, which California's master plan for higher education promises a free education uh, from public universities in California. But even UC President Mark Udoff said that the California higher education master plan is in tatters. Those are the words that he used. Mm -hmm. Annette, how do the low-income students handle such a huge increase? Well, yeah, it's such an interesting question because a lot of these protests are um, students saying, we will not be able to continue our education. We're too low income and we're going to have to drop out. But um, there's a program called the Blue and Gold, which says that any student whose family makes less than $70,000 a year will pay nothing in tuition. Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, major issues at the Regents meeting um, was how the, un the regents said that they had done a horrible job in explaining this financial aid to the students. Their education will be free except for living expenses, but student these low-income students are not going to have to quit school, and the university really wants the students to know this, and they chastise themselves for not making that clearer. Have there been talks of <coughs> alternatives to a fee hike to close the shortfall in the UC budget? Well, there's a lot of hand-wringing, and then every time um, Mark Udoff says, we just have no more money, um, uh, John Garamani or somebody else comes up and says, what about this oil severance tax, which would create, this, it's uh, being talked about in the legislature now, and would create a dedicated funding stream just for higher education, CSU, UC, community colleges. But um, when um, Assembly Speaker Karen Bass, who is a regent, she said, do I have your support for getting this passed? Um, there was lukewarm support from UC and CSU, and that is because they have quibbles with this particular bill, but evidently uh, a oil severance tax would solve a lot of the financial problems that the universities are having right now. It's just that the chance of getting that passed is almost nil. What is the size of UC's budget and how much money would such a tax bring in anyway? Would it make a dent? Yeah, it would. Um, it would bring in over a billion dollars, they say. Now, the, the UC budget is so interesting because it's 19 billion dollars, but only about uh, two and a half billion comes from the state. That was three billion, but the state has reduced its support, which is what is causing this whole problem. The anger of the students is, why can't you take from all that other pool of money and give it to us? And that way you won't have to lay off faculty and lay off, uh, raise our fees. And Mark Udoff and the regents say that that is dedicated money. It's not money that they can just dip into. Uh, they need to maintain the quality of the university and attract the Nobel laureates that they have and pay them uh, what they pay them. And so um, it is really, they say, a question of getting the state to increase funding for higher education. And um, are there any talks of uh, things like what we heard before? 
in disbanding athletics there? I mean, are there other pools of money that have not been closely looked at? I think the news is, is, is mainly bad. <laughs> um, Mark Udoff and also uh, Chancellor Reed from CSU are each planning to go to the state hat in hand and say, you know, give us 800 million dollars, give us 900 million dollars, reinstate this, but it's not going to happen. There's there's not any plan to make changes on the uh, UC budget with, with athletics or anything. It's just supposed to come from the state, and the state says it's not forthcoming. Well, has the governor spoken out on this? Has anybody from the legislature spoken out about this at all? Not at present, because they're still at the very beginning of their budget process, and so when I called the Department of Finance. They said, we're going to have more budget information in December. And we're not really ready to say just exactly what we may or may not be willing to give um, higher education just yet. But from all indications, there's not a lot to give. Well, Stu, that leads us directly to your story. And that is, we use the word grim and dim now when we talk about financial projections for the state. And of course, nothing, I guess, can happen for UC without help from state finances. Right, to, to no one's surprise this week, the uh, Legislative Analyst Office released a report saying that the state, uh, after closing uh, cumulative $77 billion shortfall already over the past two fiscal years, they're facing another $20 billion for the next 19 months. And it gets even worse in the long term. For the, until the year 2015, we're gonna be facing a, a 20 an annual $20 billion deficit. What that means for the short term is that there's going to be more cuts, possibly to higher education. There's going to be more cuts to possibly be possibly to spending uh, to social programs, mm -hmm. and there's also the possibility that we might see our taxes go up again. Um, that's one problem. The second problem is that uh, it puts a lot of pressure on California's cash reserves right now. Controller John Chung said that as maybe as soon as uh, this spring we might have trouble paying our bills. That might mean another round of IOUs, which means uh, n another, you know, s several billions of dollars that might not go into the economy. And that might further happen our uh, recovery from this recession. We seem to be in this spiral. Uh, who's, anybody, any body of people addressing this? Um, the Democrats and Re Republicans can't agree on how to solve these uh, seemingly perennial deficits. The only thing they can agree on is that we have to increase our revenue base somehow, and that means encouraging job growth. And, uh, but what policies will do that? Uh, that's also a point of contention up in Sacramento. What are the chances that this two-thirds requirement for raising taxes, raising more revenue, will be addressed or changed, or is that a fixed in stone? Democrats, uh, you know, every every time there's a budget problem, Democrats have always brought up the problem that uh, that the two-thirds uh, majority requirement to pass a budget is, is hampering the state's ability to solve the deficit. But there is there was a recent poll from the Public Policy Institute of California that says that um, California is a bit wary of, of changing that, and they think it's a good thing to have some uh, have a minority party have some say in uh, deciding uh, what our budget will be. How are bondholders reacting to all this news? Are they nervous? How will investors be more reluctant to help finance the state's operations? Well, any time the state says that, hey, you know, we might have trouble paying our bills, that's uh, that's a cause to worry. But the state treasurer's office has been uh, very adamant about saying California has never defaulted on its payments. Um, and if uh, there, its credit rating does, its credit rating, its credit rating could go down if it has to issue IOUs again. But that might actually present an opportunity to investors, which might get um, a higher yield on those bonds. Leadership uh, from the governor's office or from the speaker's office or any of those people <laughs> who, who are out ahead of the band here on supposedly trying to solve this problem. The governor says um, uh, mm -hmm. he's uh, against, uh, there, there's, there's been so much disagreement. The one thing that, the, that we can expect when the governor releases his budget in January is that there will probably be no uh, proposal to raise taxes. He says Californians are through with tax increases. We're going to do this by cutting. But faced with closing parks, uh, <laughs> making the university uh, not available to, to many students. Um, what are they basing this on that Californians uh, don't want? What is le left to cut? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, the Democrats are saying we're already <coughs> cut to the bone. The safety net has been eliminating, uh, eliminated for millions of Californians already. But uh, I think the governor is basing this on the results of the May 19 poll. That's, uh, there was, there's a, a ballot measure that would have increased taxes over or extended a tax increase for the next two years. 
and Californians soundly rejected that by, I think, by 60 percent. Um, so it's his, it's in his opinion that the state doesn't need any more taxes okay. right now. Well, what about from some of the candidates who are running for governor? Anything creative coming from them? So how do we get through this period? Mm -hmm. uh, the Republicans are saying, uh, well, Meg Whitman for one is saying that uh, we need to eliminate the size of the uh, state public, you know, uh, we eliminate uh, jobs in state government. He, she thinks that'll save some money. Steve Poisner, another Republican, thinks that we need to cut spending uh, by, c c reduce taxes by 10 percent. He thinks that will uh, stimulate enough job growth to help cover the deficit. Tom Campbell thinks that we do need to raise some taxes. One tax would be the gas tax, and that would go directly to help fund public education. But he also thinks that spending needs to be pared down. Um, Jerry Brown hasn't said much about his plans. Gavin Newsom, when he was running for governor, said that he, uh, they said that he thought uh, the legislature should have considered some of the tax proposals, such as adding a tax on alcohol or tobacco. Mm -hmm. So furloughs will continue at least into next year and then find out what the next step is? It's interesting. The, the analyst report that was released this week doesn't uh, factor in uh, furloughs continuing, but uh, it looks mm -hmm. as if the governor and the legislature are going to have to look at that if they want to uh, cut spending. Mm -hmm. Okay. None of that <laughs> is good news at all coming from the state. Certainly does not encourage the regents to have confidence that they're going to get relief. They, from, call, uh, they call the state an unreliable partner. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you. <Yeah. laughs> thank you, Stu. Well, Mark Calvi, first now I want you to explain to me in the Wells Fargo story and this big payback to investors, what kinds of investment instruments are we talking about? It has the arcane name of auction rate securities, but essentially allowed hospitals, companies, other bond issuers to pay lower short-term rates on long-term borrowing by frequently auctioning off the debt over and over, sometimes as frequently as a week. This was attractive to investors because they felt they could get their money out at any time over you know, the course of the week, and it gave them higher rates than they could earn maybe on treasuries. Uh, unfortunately, the market froze in February of 2008. And so uh, it was a classic case of if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And Wells Fargo investors, along with the rest of the industry, this was an industry-wide um, uh, product, uh, they could not get their money out. Some sold at a loss. I, I know of uh, people like you and I losing 10% of their investment on what they thought was as safe as cash in the bank. And so it, this is Wells 18 months later saying, OK, we're going to buy these securities back from investors based you know, on the litigation with the State Attorney uh, General Jerry Brown, and half that money does go to Californians. Mm -hmm. So is this something that was prevalent throughout the banking industry? It certainly was. It was extremely popular for, because it looked like a win-win situation. Uh, but once Wall Street and investors realized, once again, that risk is a four-letter word, they didn't want to participate in the auctions, they failed. So it did not allow for the, the, the automatic refinancing of this debt. So, Mark, who are some of these investors? I mean, are they real people like you and me, or wh who are well, they? Well, they certainly are. In fact, I think a lot of people were surprised they were even in auction rate securities. They thought they were just in an account that was paying a little bit better than they could get elsewhere. And so you had charities, uh, individuals, not, you know, nonprofits losing money, and they, it was quite a shock. You know, when you're looking at having money in the bank or in a, a money market account, you're expecting you can pull it down at any time you may need it. And when they lost that ability, uh, some felt the pain. Uh, and uh, can you put this in context of the greater financial crisis? Is, is this part of it, or will it exacerbate it? It's, it's a good point, because even though $60 billion in these securities has been repurchased through some of these settlements like Wells and others have done, the bigger issue in, in the banking, this is kind of a sideshow, the bigger issue coming down the pike is commercial real estate. They think it might be a, a redo of the mortgage problems uh, in the residential side. And I sat down with the Mechanics Bank CEO, Steve Buster, yesterday. On the uh, upside, he said, we're definitely in recovery. The recession is over. But it's going to be a slow and painful recovery. And he actually sees a 40% increase in the rate of unemployment hitting as high as 14%. That's not good news. Uh, for, for the unemployed, their bankers, or the state of California and their tax collections. Is it possible to have recovery and still have nearly 15 percent unemployment? Well, I think a lot of people are having trouble getting their mind around that idea. Mm -hmm. Even if the GDP is growing, even if it does feel like technically we're out of a recession, it doesn't feel like that on Main Street. And I can assure you, Steve Buster was quick to say, uh, I can change my mind if something unforeseen happens. Mm -hmm. So I think he's giving himself a little bit of an out there wisely. Mm -hmm. We also heard from Swab that, that they 
they they did not embrace the settlement that Absolutely. Jerry Brown worked out. Uh, people are watching Schwab nationally because they're digging in their heels and saying, we're a different animal. We didn't underwrite these securities like a Citigroup or others have done. Plus, we deal with self-directed investors. We were processing orders put in by our uh, clients, so we should not have to make up this uh, loss that they've experienced. It, it's like if they had bought Google and it went down, should we have to make up for the losses they experienced in a Google investment? So I think, it's, I think all eyes are on Schwab to see how does this uh, develop and unfold as they uh, d deal with this whole issue of auction rate securities. Will we hear, m well, I don't know whether we will or not, hear more um, outcomes uh, that are this good for investors in the future, do you I, think? I, I'm not optimistic. This is uh, reportedly the largest buyback and uh, in making investors whole. Uh, and I think it was a unique situation. Uh, there are, I think, a lot of investors out there still nursing their wounds and they only wish they could get this type of buyback that Wells Fargo City and others have agreed to do. Is this a problem that Wells inherited in, in all of the mergers and acquisitions that went on back during the height of the banking crisis? In many respects, uh, they bought Wachovia. Wachovia in the summer of 08 had, said, had signed a, like a letter of intent of how they had planned to resolve auction rate securities. Weeks later, they had trouble keeping their doors open uh, when they ran into their own troubles. So Wells bought them um, at the end of the last year. So they've kind of picked up Wachovia's issues on this matter. They had their own. And I think what they're trying to do is put out this fire. Let's resolve that matter because uh, they're getting high marks on the Wachovia integration. But they have a full plate. This takes one thing off the plate for them. Was the federal government involved in this at all? Or was this just done by... You know, it's, people like uh, Jerry Brown, Attorney General here. The Attorney working. Generals at the state level are the ones that are really taking a lot of action. In fact, Schwab is responding to the New York Attorney General's office investigating the matter. So, mm -hmm. once again, we're seeing a lot of action with it, within the state Attorney Generals uh, dealing with this issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we must say that Wells did not uh, admit to doing anything that is correct, wrong. Absolutely. That these were just circumstances that had to be yes. settled. Is that right? No, no admitting of wrongdoing. Okay. Well. Thanks to you, Mark. At least uh, some investors are a bit happier today. Oh, yes. And in about 90 days or so, they might see some Yeah, it's going to be so. quick, yes. Okay. Well, thanks to you, Mark. Thanks to you, Stu. And thanks to you, Nanette.